Καλησπέρα. Είμαστε στο Αθηνά Live, όπου θα έχουμε μια συνέντευξη με τον κιθαρίστα Ματία Έκλαντ. Mr. Έκλαντ, welcome to Greece. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Thank you. Uh, why are you here for? It's a good, uh, good question. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, in, a, in a confused moment, I said uh, yes to learning many, many, many um, nasty jazz fusion notes. And uh, so I will do my utmost not to ruin this fine gig here. Um, music by uh, Georgos Fakanas. Is that you say that, Fakanas? Yes, yes, okay. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an honor to be in this fine place and everything, but uh, I'm uh, very much a, a metal man, you know? Um, so, but on the other hand, I always like to play with my pants down, so I do expose myself to stuff I'm not really in control of, and sometimes you, you fuck it up completely, but it's part of life, so um, I base my career on fucking up things, so it's okay. <laughs> Is it the first time you do something like that? Not really. Well, I try. I play with big bands and I play with uh, symphony orchestras and bebop stuff. And I'm I'm terrible at everything. So I try to I, I try to wing it. But it's good for me to to. Um, so it's more like a, a learning experience for you. Yeah, exactly. It's it's. Uh, I will always be again a hard rock musician, and that's what I. Uh, do and would I come from and so on but uh, it's always nice to try different things as well I mean two weeks ago we were on stage with my band Free Kitchen in, in Kathmandu in Nepal with smoke machines and fire and big equipment and big festival and thousands of uh, Nepalese kids and, and that's great to be a, a superhero and sometimes you're in a groovy club for a couple of hundred people you know and, and playing written music I have to read the music you know um, and it's also cool I mean I just like to make music and I'm happy I could uh, that I've been able to do uh, make a living from playing my strange guitar style for for 24 years so it's amazing yeah so you can read music yeah. have you started music I quit school when I was 16 actually and don't quit school now boys and girls but I did and, and uh, I had my mom and dad's blessing to actually sit home for uh, 10 11 12 hours every day and practice my brain out. so I quit school but then I got very frustrated in in uh, after a while when my sister showed me a book with chords and said could you just play a F major 7 I think it was and I didn't know what it was you know I could uh, sweep pick and I could uh, play my brains out and everything but I couldn't play an F major 7 because I didn't know what a major 7 was um, so from that moment on I actually tried to learn how to read music and why is it called a major seven and learn about music theory and then from that point I screwed it up with unorthodox tonality and, and odd time signatures and everything like that so I'm a self-taught uh, Viking bastard yeah do you think that's important for someone to read music it depends you know when I compose my own music I never write it down I never write it down uh, some dedicated kids out there write stuff down every eventually and I have to go eh, well that's uh, that chord is messed up and so on um, but so and with free kitchen we never write anything down we I just say hey it was third fret you know uh, and so on but um, uh, I have this Freak Guitar Camp, which is uh, a camp I've done it for 13 summers in a row. We had lots of Greek people there as well, with people from all over the world come to Sweden, and uh, I sit on my guru chair and I teach my my complete brains out for six days, and then we have I have a break, uh, and then I'll do another six days, and then I write backing track music, and I have to put everything down on on a piece of paper. Luckily, I have friends who are much better to write than than I do, so I hire them. So yeah. Do you have a, a rough time reading this music and understanding it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and lots of this, many, all these black dots here that you see, uh, they have sometimes very little to do with how I play guitar, you know. I'm self-taught, I'm left-handed, I do everything backwards. There are many, many, many players who are much more um, equipped to play this kind of stuff than, than me. Left-handed, uh, but you play with your right hand. Yeah, well, I think I am doing this correctly because this is my left hand. You know, if I uh, was chopping woods, uh, chopping wood in the, the the woods of Sweden where I live, and I managed to all of a sudden, you know, uh, chop off my right hand, which I 
don't plan to, but if I would, I would find a way to put some super glue on, on, on the pick and maybe be in an ACDC cover band. Because this is my left hand, you know. Uh, so I think I'm right and everybody else are wrong. This is left-handed playing, boys and girls. So stop playing this way. And if you're right-handed, you should immediately start this way. So that's how I do it. So, but I do everything backwards. And before I could walk when I was a kid, I, 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 I could run, you know. And that's how it is. Before I can play... I was into... Whatever, you know, so I, I do everything backwards. Let's talk about your influences. When did you first start playing guitar and what kind of music did you hear back then? Well, um, it started with Kiss for me because I wanted to basically uh, drool blood and spit fire and, uh, you know, uh, maybe have uh, demon boots. Uh, that was the reason uh, I picked up the guitar. I, um, and then I... Uh, bumped into Frank Zappa in 1981 uh, and I went to a Frank Zappa concert and it screwed me up a bit because I felt that I like this as well. I like what Frank is doing and I like to spit blood as well, you know, and fire. So it's like, well, there's more to life than just fire breathing, you know, and so on. Um, so uh, it started with Kiss and, and, you know, Sweet Alice Cooper, and then Frank Zappa came into my life, and then Metallica, the first Metallica album, Kill Em All. I was like, this is cool too! And then I discovered Django Reinhardt and Mahavishnu Orchestra, and I discovered uh, Miles Davis and, and all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, uh, good music, basically. Uh, but again, I will always be a, um, a heavy metal bastard, you know, but, but I also like to play different kinds of music to challenge myself, so... Yeah, what was the question again? Yeah, yeah. what kind of influences, yes. And when did you decide that you want to do this for a living and nothing else? Probably since I was a sperm, uh, I think. A good I, decision I, for a sperm, I yes, think. Yes, 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 yes. I, I was the fastest one and I had to use my speed to do something. So I started to become, you know, a guitar hero is a good way to, to make a living. So yeah, There's another old thing there, because you said your parents were supportive. Yes. This is not very common. No. Relax. Just <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's very... Why, why do you think they were supportive to you? The, the thing is, uh, since I, I played the drums since I was five, six years old, and, and messing uh, with a drum kit, playing punk music, basically, and having all kinds of makeup and, and dressing up like a moron. But uh, anyway... Um, so um, I think they could see that I had a genuine passion for music and I also, I was a mistake. My mom and dad didn't plan to have more children because I have four elder sisters that they desperately tried to raise, you know, to become good citizens of planet Earth uh, with a good education. Of course they failed completely. So I'm eight years from my closest sister, from my the youngest sister. So I was a mistake that fell out of my mom when she was around 38. Um, so they probably realized that there's no way we're going to stop this crazy dude anyway, you know. So I said, I'm going to quit school cool, and sit home and, and, uh, and riff my brains out. And they said, fine, do it. And they, uh, I've always been super cool with what I'm doing and supported because family can really screw you up. You know, if you, uh, your mom and dad said, you, you got to get a real job and music is not a job and, and you have a passion for it and this is what you want to do and you frame your life with stuff that is good for you. You know, um, uh, it's so common that they, you know, this is not and your neighbor or your best friend, ah, you're never going to make it, you, you will fuck up and hey, you know, get a job and, and so on. But I tell you, as a musician, you work twice as much as everybody else, you know, and um, uh, last year I went uh, through 28 countries in a year and if you start counting how many countries 28 countries actually are you will realize that it's more than most people actually uh, visit during a lifetime you know so and it's different time zones every day I move around from one place to the other every day and it's a great job it's a luxury uh, job in many ways but by God we work a lot you know and and expose ourselves to to nasty environments so yeah I can't remember the question again, but uh, never mind. Uh, have your parents ever been to any of your shows? Oh, yes. 
Yes, maybe. Did they like it? Of course, yeah. They, they, they like it. They, the metal shows? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely, yeah. My dad passed away 10 years ago, uh, but my mom has been to some recent shows with Free Kitchen. Always give her good seats and everything. She's old. And plugs. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's cool. She, uh, she dragged me to my first Kiss concert in 1980. Um, and she bought, I remember the day of the release, she bought Iron Maiden's The Number of the Beast. So was a metalhead herself? And not, not really, but she could tell that it was doing something good to me. So she was like, oh, this is, this is bad for you and blah, blah, blah. She, she, was, uh, she's, she is very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you see yourself in the next years? What do you want to do? I want to do what I'm doing now um, to be able to, to, to grow my own moustache, as I like to put it. I have a new album coming out in February, released by, uh, to be released worldwide by Steve I and Favorite Nations. He's my record company boss and a... And a have you worked with him? Sorry? Have you worked with him? Yeah, we, we played together and we're gonna do a, I will be a special guest at his uh, super duper special guest at a show in uh, Gothenburg this month, in a couple of weeks, I think. So yeah, he's been my record company boss now for the past 12 years, I think. So he released both my free guitar albums and now there's a double instrumental solo album with 40 songs and two hours of music with groovy guests. And uh, it's amazing that I can actually put this out and that people check it out. It's amazing. So I'm very grateful. Thank you, people. Thank you. Για περισσότερες παρουσιάσεις, εξοπλισμούς, συνεντεύξεις και ενημέρωση για τα επόμενα live, επισκεφτείτε το guitarspot.gr.